Okay, this is a short video aimed at uh, my current third year aerospace uh, aircraft design students. Um, I've been having conversations with quite a few of you recently about uh, longitudinal static stability of your aircraft and, st and stability in general. Um, but what I'm going to focus on in this little uh, revision video uh, is the concept of static margin in the context of longitudinal uh, static stability. So the first thing we need to think about are the different types of equilibrium. So generally speaking, uh, there are three different types of equilibria. Uh, the first we would describe as a stable equi equilibrium position. And the classic diagram of this is thinking about a system where you have a ball uh, in a trough. So this ball is at the bottom of the trough, and if it's perturbed by some instantaneous force that acts on the ball, um, it's fairly obvious that eventually the ball will settle back into its original position at the bottom of the trough. So we call this a stable equilibrium position. Conversely, over here, we have an unstable equilibrium position. In principle, it's possible for that ball to rest at the top of this hill, but in, as soon as it's perturbed from this equilibrium position, it will roll either to the left or to the right. Um, and there's a state that sits in the middle, which we refer to as neutrally stable. And in this case, it's equivalent to having our ball sat on flat ground. So we would describe this as neutrally stable if that ball is perturbed then there is no restoring force. So there's nothing that's going to try and get it back to its original position. But it's not going to run away. As soon as it's perturbed, it's not going to exponentially um, deviate from this position. So we call this neutrally stable. There's nothing forcing it away uh, from its original state, and there's nothing um, restoring it back to its original equilibrium state and that will be important later on. Now we often think about uh, the stability of an aircraft. I'm going to have a go at drawing a general so there's our typical aircraft layout and let's assume that it's got a center of gravity somewhere in the middle here And we usually think about whether this aircraft is stable. Well, let's first of all, let's assume that this is traveling with steady so with straight level, um, unaccelerated flight. So it's, it's in equilibrium. And we think about, well, what happens if there's some perturbation to this equilibrium state? So let's say a gust of wind, for example causes the angle of attack to increase. Um, and what we would like to happen is that, that as the angle of attack is increased, there is some restorative moment in that sense um, that restores the aircraft to its equilibrium state. And we would say that if that was the case, that the aircraft is stable, certainly statically stable. We'll think later on in the course about uh, the difference between static stability and dynamic stability. Now we can think about what's going on there. In fact, if we if we make this direction, just in terms of a sign convention, we're going to make this direction our positive moment direction. Um, and that tends to be the convention, is that your pitching moment uh, is positive in that sense. It's positive in the same sense as angle of attack is positive. For stable, neutral and unstable equilibrium we could draw the following graphs. So if on the x-axis I have the pitching moment and I have negative pitching moment in this direction, positive pitching moment in this direction and this is angle of attack there'll be some position here, some angle of attack uh, where the aircraft is stable. So the pitching moment about the center of gravity is zero. Um, and if the variation of pitching moment with angle of attack varies like this, as the angle of attack goes up, 
the pitching moment becomes negative and restores it. So, so we would call this stable equilibrium. Conversely, the unstable case So from its equilibrium position, where there's, for a given alpha, the pitching moment about the aircraft center of gravity is zero. If this is what our curve looks like, then the aircraft is unstable, because if alpha increases, so does CM, and the, that increase in CM will tend to cause it to continue pitching up. So what does neutrally stable look like? Well, a neutral a neutrally stable aircraft would have a CM against alpha plot that looks something more like this. And I'll plot it in a different colour so you can see. So you might have something that looks like that. So that from its equilibrium position here, if the angle of attack is affected by some perturbation, it could be a gust of wind or something like that, um, well actually the the pitching moment doesn't do anything to restore it, it doesn't do anything to, to push it further away, but it also doesn't do anything to restore the aircraft's position, so we would call this in the middle neutrally stable. So essentially what we're saying here is that for the aircraft to be stable, what we're looking for is that the variation of the pitching moment, if it's defined as I've defined it above, with angle of attack, so dcm by d alpha, is less than zero. And this is our stability condition. Now the question then becomes, well, how big do you want this gradient? How, how big do you want dcm, or how large do you want the de derivative of cm with alpha to be? Well, this brings us on to look at some of these these terms that we've been talking about recently, like center of pressure, and neutral point, and aerodynamic centers. I'm going to try and explain what the difference between these things is, because this often does cause confusion. So first of all, let's consider the case of a symmetric aerofoil. attempt to draw a symmetric aerofoil. Okay, so imagine that is a symmetric aerofoil. Um, now typically, uh, the center of pressure, so this is the point about which, if you were to integrate all of the, 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 the lifting forces acting across that aerofoil, the single point about which those, uh, all of those forces, or the pressures, uh, across that wing act. So the point about which there is zero moment uh, is the center of pressure. And typically, that center of pressure for a symmetrical aerofoil is somewhere around the quarter chord position. So if the overall chord is C, the center of pressure typically for a symmetric aer aerofoil is around about uh, quarter of the chord length along uh, the aerofoil from the leading edge. And obviously for a symmetrical aerofoil, when the lift coefficient is zero, which is when the angle of attack is zero, the pitching moment on that aerofoil is also zero. Uh, so CM is also equal to zero. And the important thing here is that for a symmetrical aerofoil, the center of pressure position doesn't vary with angle of attack. So that center of pressure position is fixed there. It's fixed at around about the quarter chord position. But for a cambered aerofoil, which is what most of you are using in your aircraft design, um, because what you've been trying to achieve is an optimum or a maximum lift-drag ratio, which you've ended up with some kind of camber on your aerofoil, well, now, the centre of pressure is, n is no longer fixed. The position at which, if you integrate the vertical forces acting across that surface, 
would act if they were acting at a single point, um, varies. So the centre of pressure at low angles of attack might be somewhere around here, and then, they, and then it might drift rearwards with angle of attack. So the centre of pressure position is varying. So we can say that the position of the centre of pressure for a cambered aerofoil is a function of alpha. Now, in fact, at CL equals zero, so when this aerofoil is generating no lift at all, the pitching moment is not necessarily zero. Which implies that actually the centre of pressure is effectively an infinite distance from the wing. So our centre of pressure might have drifted an infinite dif distance aft uh, of the aerofoil. And this requires us to introduce a new concept, because if we're measuring, uh, so if we're measuring stability relative to the centre of pressure position, so if we if if we're comparing the centre of gravity position of the aircraft relative to the centre of pressure position of the wing, and this centre of pressure position is vastly changing. Well, that's not a use, useful measure. So instead, we introduce something called the aerodynamic centre. Now, the aerodynamic centre is the point about which the pitching moment is not changing um, on the wing. So the aerodynamic centre might be here. And it's not, unlike the centre of pressure, it's not the point about which zero moment, uh, there is zero pitching moment. This is the point about which there is no change in the pitching moment. So about the, the aerodynamic centre, dcm by d alpha equals zero. And then what we do is define a thing called the static margin. And the static margin is essentially the distance from the centre of gravity Let's imagine this is where the centre of gravity sits for our aircraft. And this distance here, the horizontal distance between the centre of gravity and the aerodynamic centre, gives us our static margin. So static margin is the x-coordinate of the CG position. Well, it's the x-coordinate of the aerodynamic centre minus the x-coordinate of the centre of gravity. And it's usually normalised, if you're just thinking about a wing on its own, it's usually normalised by the chord length of the, ring, the wing and then expressed as a percentage. Now, the thing that often gets people confused at this stage, if you're just thinking about a wing, all of this is relatively straightforward. But what complicates things is when you start thinking about an entire aircraft, in reality, what you often find is it's not possible to get the centre of gravity for the aircraft ahead of the aerodynamic centre, which is the thing that you need to give you a positive static margin and therefore a stable aircraft. Um, instead, the centre of gravity might be somewhere around here, behind the aerodynamic centre. So conventional aircraft will add a tail uh, a horizontal stabilizer, which typically is generating in normal straight and level flight a downforce. And this provides some additional stability, some additional pitch stability. And you can see why that is the case if your central gravity is in this area near the wing. As alpha increases, if a gust of wind acts like this to, to, to push the to increase the pitch of the aircraft. You're effectively also increasing the angle of attack of this rear surface. And if it was generating downforce, it's now generating less downforce. So it's effectively increased the pitching moment in this sense because it's now generating less downforce. And because it has a long moment arm from the centre of gravity back to where the tailplane is, um, it has a significant effect. And what effectively this allows the centre of gravity to do is drift in this direction whilst maintaining stability. 
And the position to which this centre of gravity can, can be allowed to drift whilst maintaining stability, or uh, at least having neutral stability, is called the neutral point. So if the centre of gravity could drift back as far as this point, and you have neutral stability, so a zero, effectively a zero static margin, we would call this the neutral point. Now, the neutral point could be behind the aerodynamic centre. So there could well be a position, if you've got a tailplane, um, behind the, the aerodynamic centre at which you could place your centre of gravity and still have a stable aircraft. And the thing that's confusing is, up in, when we defined the aerodynamic centre, we were just thinking about the wing on its own. What you could equally do is think about the neutral point as being the aerodynamic centre of the entire aircraft. So rather than just think about the wing and say, where is my aerodynamic center? You can say, OK, for my entire aircraft, which includes your horizontal tailplane, um, where is the aerodynamic center? And that effectively becomes your neutral point. So, so if we forget about just the aerodynamic center of the wing and think about the aerodynamic center of the entire aircraft, that is the neutral point. So that is now at this position here. And then your overall aircraft static margin is simply a measure of where your centre of gravity is relative to the aerodynamic centre of the entire aircraft and not the aerodynamic centre of just the wing alone. Now you've been, or lots of you have been using the SWAN VLM tool to do your longitudinal uh, static stability analysis. And the aerodynamic centre position that that code gives you is the overall aerodynamic centre of the entire aircraft. So that makes your life very easy, in fact. So that is your also your neutral point, which means that all you have to do, and in fact the code does this for you, um, to work out your static margin and decide whether your aircraft um, is stable or not, is measure the centre of gravity, the, 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 the aerodynamic centre position relative to the centre of gravity. Um, now in the code... Uh, the aerodynamic center is normalized by the chord length of your main wing. So you need to bear that uh, in mind. Um, and I've discussed with lots of groups of what, about what sensible targets you should be aiming for in terms of your static margin. Um, I'm going to be holding an office hours this Friday uh, between 1 and 2, uh, specifically geared towards helping teams uh, make sense of the results they're getting from uh, the SWAN VLM analysis on longitudinal static stability. Um, so if this is still something you want to discuss with me, please come to that on Friday, 1 o'clock.